stories and busy. But it's not really a long doubt at this point because I've already posted up videos by the time we actually upload this video. But this is our review of <laughs> Sarah Jess's new book, The Moon and More. And Joy's going to tell you about it. Okay, um, this book follows the main character, Emmeline, who is 18. She just graduated from high school, so it's the summer after her graduation, you know, before she goes off to college. And a lot has transpired before this book takes place. Her mom raised her and um, had her when she was 17, and she got adopted by who she now calls her dad when she was three, her biological father, who she calls her father. Like, she has a very distinguished definition of dad and father were not the same thing and her father she didn't meet until she was 10 and after they met for the first time they had they created this like completely academic relationship i just talked about school and books and stuff like that and um yes and like at like 16 when emily's 16 her father takes an extreme interest in college. And, like, he wants to get her out of Kobe and in an Ivy League school. And, you know, don't worry about it. I'll pay for it type attitude. And she gets into her top choice, which is Columbia. And she's like, Dad, I got in. Well, she's not calling Dad. She's like, I got into Columbia. Yay. And his response is, congratulations. I can't help you. I can't pay for it. I'm sorry things have come up. And then communication stops until that summer when he's like, hey, your 10-year-old brother Benji and I are coming down to stay near you because my aunt died and we're going to live in her house and take care of affairs and yada, 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 yada. So there's like a lot of pent up like resentment towards him and her mom is of course not happy with him and it's just bad. And so the story is like, who is Emily going to be? Is she going to be who she always, ha always has been, what Kobe's creator you know, what her family is, or she going to, like, adventure out and be more like her father. And they're personified, like, these two choices are personified by, by, by boys, because it's, it's YA romance, you know, whatever. And you have Luke, who's her steady boyfriend. They've been together since freshman, uh, freshman year of high school. You know, good-looking guy. Everyone, you know, likes him, but he chose Emmeline. Yeah. And Theo, who is this New Yorker who comes to work on a documentary, who wants to be a director, who's very driven, knows what he wants. He goes out and he gets it. We have feelings about both of these boys, but spoiler free, guys. And um, so that's, that's the summary of the book. That's the summary of the book. So we're going to talk about the plot. I mean, I found, I always like how she makes the stories very relatable and extremely realistic. I mean, most YA romances are just, like, cliche kind of things that are just kind of like, oh, man, that's really sweet and fun, but she makes it really deep, and it's more than that. So that's what I like about this plot. Here we are! I'll talk about humor a little bit later in the review, but, oh, my goodness, the humor in this book is great. All right, next, now for the next big section of the review, characters. Okay. We'll talk about the main girl. Her name is Emily. She's, I find her relatable, because she's just like any other kid that got out of high school, wants adventure, wants something new, wants to get out of town, she's been there her whole life, wants something new. I really liked how she was, I thought she was very well developed, I mean, for the most part. I mean, she wasn't, she could think for herself, I mean, she made, of course she made dumb decisions, but she could think for herself, and she wasn't like the... Bella Swatton type, which is kind of annoying, but that's her. Um, I'm going to talk about the two guys in this book, Theo and Luke. Uh, Luke, you know, represents the steady, the common, the normal, the familiar, and Luke represents, like, excitement and new and blah, 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 blah. And, like, at first you don't really know how to feel about Theo, and you're, like, on the edge about Luke. You don't, because, I mean, they've fallen into a routine because they've been together for so long and so you don't really know is it really meant to be or is it just fizzling out and oh Theo is something new and exciting and you think that oh it's following YA romance formula so this is how it's going to end false and false and more false so it's it, it like the the typical formula doesn't really follow through the typical Sarah Dessen formula isn't really here either when it comes to Theo and Luke it's just these two really well-developed characters, and, like, even though we might not like who 
one of the characters winds up to become and be developed and who he develops into, it fits. It's what he should be. And it's like, then the other character is like, oh, we, we wrote you off, but you're actually this. And I really like, so like, good developed characters, you, we wind up not really liking one of them because, well, someone has to be the bad guy. Uh, and I really like the family relationship in this book, the one between her and her mom, which, I mean, her mom had her when she was really young, a teenager, you know, the deal. And it's just kind of like, I kind of liked how her mom wasn't like this typical mom, like teenage mom kind of thing. She really cared about her daughter, and she really wanted her to succeed, and she wanted, she wanted to protect her from her father, but she didn't want the same thing to happen to her, to her, to Emily, as it did to her. Like, she didn't want her to get hurt or anything. And then her relationship with her dad, which wasn't perfect at all, kind of like, very distant, very, you know how it is when you have a broken family, but it was very, I thought she handled that very well in the book, too, very realistic. Kind of ended realistic, too. I mean, wasn't all sunshine and roses, but it wasn't all sad, either. You know what I mean? Yeah. And her, how's she yeah, interacted with her sister? Yes. And the grandma. Like, just the family relationships are really good. Uh, the family characters are really good. They add nice as well. Okay, so odds and ends, like the, the characters that are, like, supporting characters, but, like, they're actually really big part of the, of the book, made this book. Uh, you have her two best friends, Morris and Daisy. Morris is her best guy friend. Daisy is her best girlfriend. They're, they are really important. You know, you have Clyde, who is the uh, subject of the documentary that Theo and his boss Ivy are shooting. And so he, he's a very important character. And Benji, her half-brother. And, like, these characters are, like, the odds and ends characters of the book. They are so good. They become, like, whenever you, like, have a scene with them, you're like, ah, this is going to be a good scene. Um, yeah, so, like, our favorite character that isn't, like, Emily or Theo or Luke, ah, is. I really liked her mom. I think her mom was nurturing. I mean, a lot of YA parents just kind of aren't there, but she was, and she really cared about her daughter, and that's why I liked how she was written, how she was developed. Clyde. Clyde, 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 Clyde. Clyde is great, and Clyde actually winds up teaching like, Emily the biggest lessons, like, you know, how to not abandon what is familiar and what has made you you, but yet still experience things that you don't experience in Colby. Like, he isn't ashamed of himself. Like, he likes to play, like, tricks on Ivy and Theo, and it's hilarious, and it's so funny. And he's just like, whatever, I'm Clyde. I can do what I want. He owns a laundromat slash, like, diner, so it's really odd. And, like, that odd pairing I think just shows who he is so well like he's just this odd little guy and he's hilarious all right I will say this all the time but I do love how she does plots I mean they're not like the cliche kind of thing where it's like parents aren't there or family relationships aren't developed or like the character doesn't have any friends I mean like it's got some depth to it and it's really it's really relatable in the sense that you know everybody wants adventure, but he wants new things, and, you know, you, you might make mistakes on the way to get there, and in the end, it all pays off, because you learn all these lessons, and then that's what, that's what I love about the plots. So, my likes and our dislikes, what are they, Joy? My like is humor! I said it before, I'm saying it again, humor! The humor in this book is just so good, like, other Sarah Desson books are not... Um, as humorous, like, they have some their moments or whatever, but the humor in this book is, like, you don't go a scene without something hilarious happening, almost. Like, just the interactions with every character have their hilarious moments, and it's, it's just so good. It, I mean, it makes the book, like, without the humor, I would not enjoy this book as much. Like, the humor is what sets it apart from not only other YA books, but other Sarah Dessen books that I have read. I have not read a Sarah Dessen book that is this humorous. I just, I was laughing while reading this book, like, just out loud. I have to laugh because it's so daggone hilarious. So, yeah, definitely humor. I say this all the time, but, you know, I like her family relationships that she does in her books because, you know, they're not sugar-coated or they're not typical, like, relationships. Like, her mom, 
her mom and her dad, because her, her, she has a differentiation between her dad and her father. But the relationship with her mom and her dad isn't like the typical one where they let her do anything she wants or, like, not there kind of thing. And just, they really, really care for her and they really look after her. And then you have her relationship with her father, which he's a jerk, but it's also incredibly realistic and it's not, like, something that's incredibly sugar-coated or dragged out in any way. It's just what it is in the end. So our dislikes. Um, my dislike is that... There's, like, when she, like, decides to change the move correctly, you know, like, that little part of the book, the pacing was a little bit off. That's when it becomes a little bit unrealistic, where it's like, eh, I don't really know if this would happen. You get kind of upset that she just kind of seems to forget one of the boys, and you're just like, wait a minute, I don't know if I like this decision. It's not just, like, you don't like the decision she makes, which is, you know, fine in, in books. It was just, like... I don't really know how well this fits into what you've already decided and done. You know, it seemed a little bit inconsistent. That's my only dislike, though. I, I had to really rack my mind on what I didn't like about this book. I kind of didn't like her relationship that was developed with, like, Daisy. I didn't think it was developed well enough. I mean, like, Daisy's a great character. I mean, I didn't, like, hate her anyway. It was just kind of like, I felt that her friendship wasn't, us put together as it should have been. I feel like Daisy sometimes is like the side piece that was just kind of there. Didn't really have like a side plot for herself or like any anything. Sometimes she just seemed kind of pointless. I mean, I like it when books have their friendships well developed and, you know, it was a small part of the book, but still, I felt like it could have been more than what it was. Yeah. And, you know, also, I just, I just remember this, but the cameos that Sarah Dessen always puts in her books yes. are like, if you're, if you're a Sarah Dessen reader, then you've read other books. Well, there's a few cameos that show up in this book, and it's it's fun. Like, they're like, they're like a, a sentence, and they're like, oh, I remember. Anyway, so thank you for reading, watching, reading. Thank you for watching I hope you video. read it. Yeah, <laughs> please read. Uh, I definitely, glowing recommendation, one of my favorites by her. Yes. It's great. She has plenty um, of other books, too. Yeah. You don't want to start with this one. You don't, they're not a series, too. Just listen to it. And they're not series. And I love the truth about forever. I'll say it over and over again. <laughs> but. but I think this is actually a very good book to like start you off in Sarah Destin land if you just you know, want to. They're good standalones. They are. They're all standalones. And they're great. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. This has been English. Majors. Bye.